do it anyway. The next morning I come in with the right perspective. And so that's the way we are. We get in those trials. We get in those troubles just like Peter did when he got out of the boat. He had the right mindset when he got out. Relationship was there. He knew Jesus. And he jumped out of the boat and he came to the, he came to the Lord. And, he, he, and then he began to sink. His perspective changed. He stopped thinking about Jesus and he started thinking about the waves and the storms and the battle that he was facing right then and he began to sink. But all along, Jesus was there and when he realized it again and he reached out his hand and said, save me, Lord, Jesus was right there. He's right there. And we go through stuff. And, and you know, so, so it being said that there's going to be trials and tribulations, God works with all things for his greater glory and for our good. Scripture teaches us that. The good old days could have been the good old days because somebody else prayed or because you went through some stuff to get you there. I've told you many a times about, like in sports and stuff, that we, we hated summers because during the summers when you start doing the grass drills and when you start doing all the things that just that wear you down and take such a toll on your body. But, you know, when we come out on the other side, when, when you get to the end of summer and, and the season really starts, I mean, you are in better shape than you ever was. And so that's the way we are or the way we need to be spiritually is that in the beginning, yeah, we're going to seem weak and our muscles are going to be a little, our spiritual muscles are going to be weak. But when, and what does the scripture teach us? That when we're weak, he makes us strong. He is our strength and our weaknesses. So when we come out on the other side through all the trials and the battles that we went through, we come out stronger on the other side. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But that all begins and starts with you. You. Child of the king, yes. But you still got to come to daddy with your needs. You still, you still got to, to pay attention to him. You still got to love him. You still got to care about him. Lots of people today believe that showing up to church is just showing up to church. That's, it's just a duty. It's just a habit. It's something I've got to do. It's not. It's about your relationship. It's about you caring about God. What, what you give in the offering plate, what, 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 what you do when nobody's paying attention, uh, what, when you read your Bible, when you pray your prayers, those are not for Gary. Those are not for me. They're not for some, your next door neighbor. They're for you. And so you've got to get down to business in your relationship with God or nobody will. And you're the only one. I, I preached last week about being that stand along with God. You're the only one who's going to stand before him. You're going to stand there and he's going to say, either depart from me, I never knew you, or well done, good and faithful son. <laughs> and so I would rather be the latter there. I wouldn't want to be the one that has to depart from him because I never knew you. I don't want to be that. Yes. You've got to put in the effort. Think about Moses. Now Moses grew up fairly wealthy. Now, he had a rough childhood. Maybe he didn't understand about what happened to him at his birth. Maybe he understood, maybe he didn't. Maybe they made fun of him in the palace because he was the adopted child and he wasn't the blood. I don't know. But at the same time, he grew up with wealth and he grew up with education and he had relationship with those people that he fled from. And he stayed out in the wilderness, so to speak, for a long time before God called him to come back. He came back into a place that he was uncomfortable in. He came into a place from people that he ran from. He came back to a place of people that may hate him and despise him now. He came back to the people that knew his weaknesses more than he may have known his weaknesses. And though he may have been a changed man, there was no doubt that he felt awkward. And so when God called him back to go in there, he was hesitant to go. And every time he made an excuse, God had the answer. I can't talk. Well, here, let me give you a mouthpiece. Well, how are they going to know that you sent me? Well, take up, that, take up that staff. Show it to them. Tell them. Tell them that I am sent you. Tell them. And then even the people. All those trials that came on to the Egyptians, they had to go through some of that too. It may not have afflicted the children of God the same way as it did the Egyptians because it was designed for them, but they still lived in the same land. They were still things that they may have had to do without. They were still things that may not have turned out exactly the way that they had pictured it or thought about it or whatever it may be. They were stuff that they had to go through. 
So the whole time that the Egyptians, Pharaoh said, I ain't gonna let them go. I ain't gonna let them go. I ain't gonna let them go. They had to be a buildup of frustration going on in them because there was some trials going on there because here they was standing on faith saying God's gonna set us free and yet Pharaoh said, I ain't gonna let you go. I ain't gonna let you go. And time after time after time until finally he let them go. But they had to go through some stuff. They had to be some doubts there. They had, to be, they had to be some tribulations. They had to be some trials there. They had to be some things. But yet God was still there. He didn't change. The same one that called on Moses to go back to his people was the same one that was waiting there when they got let go. Same God. Perspective. Second Corinthians 12 and 9 says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I would rather be down so that he could be glorified. I would rather all my weaknesses all my weaknesses be shown and known to everybody who can see so that God can come in and I can rest upon him and he can be glorified because in my weakness is when he makes me strong. It's when he is most noticeable. It's, it's, that's what we're missing. We're proud people. I can be proud and I don't want to show my weaknesses. That's what, that's what I said during that work day. I want to do good. I want people to say, oh, he done a great job. That was a whole lot better than I was expecting or, or he couldn't have done that any better today. I want to hear those things, but at the same time, I've got weaknesses. I've got things, if you ain't never done something before, don't expect yourself to do it perfect the first time because it ain't going to happen. Amen. But at the same time, I've got weaknesses. And so you don't want people to see those things because that makes you vulnerable. But you serve a God who fills those gaps. He's the one that takes those weaknesses and turns it into your strengths. Yeah. He shows people that you're willing and you're able to work and be led and follow. He shows people. I'm not, I'm not too proud to let my weaknesses be known. And that should be our attitude. In everything, we need to have a good relationship with God. It's in our moments of tribulation that our weaknesses are made known and then the strength of God can fill that need and the power of Christ can rest upon us. In James 1, 2, and 3, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I have grown up as a person with no patience whatsoever. I can tell you that, that that was one of my greatest weaknesses as a young man is I had no patience whatsoever. And even though God has blessed me that I have had plenty of exercise in patience and that I have grown in that, there are still moments when I am not patience, when I have none. <laughs> but knowing this, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. The trying of your faith. So what does the enemy want to do? He wants you to doubt. He wants you to take a step back. He wants you to forget about Jesus and to forget about walking on the water. He wants you to look at the storm. He wants you to look at the battle that you're facing. He wants you to look at how strong your enemy looks. He wants you to look at your weakness as a weakness and not as the opportunity for God to show his strength. He wants you to look at those things that way because when you're looking at things that way, you're not looking at God. You're not in relationship with him and your perspective is all off the map and you're looking at every place for the answer except the place where the answer lies. And when our perspective is in the right with God, when we're looking and facing Jesus on the water, we don't take our eyes off him and we don't sink and he don't have to reach down and pick us up. He's still there to do so, but he don't have to. But what do we do? We always tend to fall because of perspective. Yes. Remember that next time you're going through something that the trying of your faith worketh patience. There's going to be times when storms are going to come out of the blue and knock you right off whatever chair you're sitting on because the enemy wants you to doubt. 
Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Faith. Faith. <laughs> and the trying of your faith worketh patience. He wants us to be waiting on him. Waiting on him. How do we wait on God? I wait on God through my relationship. I know he's coming. I know he's coming. The world will tell me he doesn't exist. He'll, they'll tell you that he has no power. They'll tell you that, he ain't cha that he's changed all of his thoughts and the way that his words lines up. And they'll tell you that there's all kinds of other gods and there's all different ways into heaven and there's all different ways to receive blessings and all these different things that you get bombarded with that will try your faith, but the trying of your faith worketh patience and patience is waiting, waiting on God. So when you get down and you pray, you pray in relationship with him. Talk to him like you know him because he knows you. You call on, my mom said, call on daddy. I'm going to call on my daddy. You think you got me in a corner? I'm going to call on my daddy. I can't do it on my own. I'm going to call him up and tell him what I want. <laughs> Just like the song says, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Praise God. And I think a lot of that is, is the spiritual uplift, mounting up on those wings like eagles, running and not getting weary. Those, I, I mentioned plenty of times that, that, that in the Hebrew, they tend to take physical things and apply it to the spiritual. You're talking about an uplifting. You're talking about a spiritual uplift. When you're waiting on God, when you're patient, and you can see him coming. That's, to me, that, that's just like the, the father and the prodigal son. I, I, it doesn't say it in the scripture, but you know, every morning he may have went out on his porch to have his coffee, looking at that hillside, waiting on him to come home. That's the way we should be with God. I know he's coming. Amen. The enemy might have me in that corner, but I know he's coming. And so we need to be doing that. We need to be sitting there and waiting and looking at the hillside because he's coming. Hallelujah. He's coming. My daddy's coming. Amen. And then get that spiritual uplift. When you look at it from that perspective, that he's coming, how much better do you feel? Your spirit is uplifted like wings, like eagle. Lifted. And, and, and you feel that overjoy that flows within you. I've felt it plenty of times in my life where I can't stop humming or I can't stop singing and I'm bouncing around with this go lucky attitude and everybody else seems to be bombarded with problems and wondering what's wrong with me. And I've told you, I've been caught plenty of times. You know, when I worked for Cohen, I was dancing in my truck one time and the boss come by because I was just overjoyed in God. I was overjoyed in the presence that I had with him in my life right at that moment that I could not, could not sit down and shut up. I had to sing and praise God. And so those, that, that is your run. That is your running and not getting weary. That's your walking and not fainting. It's your spiritual uplift with wings like eagles and you not being able to slow down or stop because you cannot live one moment without spending another moment with God. He's coming. He loaded on my shunder tonight. Be open to hear and listen to the voice of God today. There's too many voices out in the wilderness that we're in. There's a lot of voices out there and some of them tell you the truth and some of them tell you lies and sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. And if you ain't got a good relationship with God, if you don't know him, it would be easy to get confused. It would be easy not to be able to tell the difference because the enemy has a good way of photocopying stuff so that it looks just like the original, but it's not the same. There's flaws and there's gaps and they'll tell you that there's other ways, but it's not the same. There's only one God. There's only one Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's only one. And if you ain't following and listening to his voice, then you're going to listen to somebody else's. And that somebody else is not going to lead you out to the greener pasture. He's not going to be the one that leads you out into the blessings, into the favor. He's not going to be the one that's going to lead you into the kingdom of God. He's going to be the one that's going to slip you over to the side and drop you off a cliff. He's going to be the one that's waiting around the corner like the roaring lion, ready just to snap you up and eat you alive because he wants nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy you. 
And so if you ain't listening, if you ain't in relationship, then you don't know. And if you're only thinking about those good old days, if you're only thinking about that one moment and not thinking about the future with God, then you are going to fall short today. We must move forward. Jesus had such a powerful ministry upon the face of this earth. As a man, in the physical, Jesus could have stayed here in that ministry as long as he chose to. The enemy, when he tempted him, said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'll give you all this. Just look. This can all be yours. Just rebuke him. I'll give you everything. If he wanted to listen to the wrong voice, if he wanted to separate himself from the Father, <laughs> he, he could have easily took over and just had a great little kingdom upon this earth. And maybe, chances are, they would have reflected on him a lot better in the world today than they do now instead of coming against him. But he chose the good way. He chose to put aside self and to accept going forward. Because we couldn't go forward if he didn't build the bridge. Be open to listen to the voice of God. Let your weaknesses be known to him. Let them be shown so that God can be seen for what he is and who he is. Be open. Back to that same scripture where we started. Ecclesiastes 7 and 5 said, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the songs of fools. Amen. I told people all along, I love music. And... There's lots of people that are better at it than I am, but I love music. And words count. i tell you a good funny. In my new job, <laughs> we were doing orientation, and, and there was a girl had her cell phone still turned on, and she had a ringtone go off, and I swear it said three or four cuss words, just like that. I mean, it was just absolute beyond vulgar, you know? And everybody in the room cracked out laughing. Rhythm of the song was nice. <laughs> but the word content was not. And so chances are, she liked it for the rhythm of the song. But the words matter. It can look good on the surface. Yeah. Amen. But the content is what counts. Yeah. And if your content is not the content of God, then you can have all the surface you want to. You can have all the nice rhythms to whatever songs and you can whisper sweet nothings in anybody's ear and tell them anything that they want to. You could be the ugliest person on the face of the earth and your wife tell you that you're the most handsome man that ever lived. And it's all good until somebody notices that you're not. <laughs> and so surface is surface. I desire the deep things of God. I desire relationship with the creator of the universe. And the good part is, is scripture says he desires a relationship with me. He desires a relationship with you. When you get up in the morning, he's right there. While you were sleeping, he was laying next to you. He was watching over you. <laughs> and tomorrow and the next day and the next day, he's still there. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you if Sister Lana would come up. I know that sometimes I come off a little strange <laughs> in some of the things that I say. But I tell you what, I think, I think that's what makes each of us what we are. God knows who we are and there ain't no use hiding it. There ain't no use trying to be somebody else. God is good to us. And lots of times we miss out. I missed out. Thursday when I felt like that and I come home like that, I missed out. I missed out because I come home in a grumpy, bad mood when my family was waiting on me. I had my children who are healthy and blessed. I had my wife who I love more than anything. I had her waiting at home for me. And so, I mean, I can sit there and doom and gloom and woe is me all I want to <laughs> and miss out on the blessings and the favor that was there all along. And so all of us, when those trials come, check your perspective. Check it. And realize who's there, who's really there, and who really counts. 
and you'll notice a change. You'll notice a blessing. Let's let go of the good old days and let's move forward.